Welcome to another accounting video. Um, today, accounting one, Jan 2013, and it was requested in another video to do question one. So it's about uh, a company who makes some sales on credit. There's a few entries to make in the cash book, the sales ledger, and a discount account. So I think a very important thing um, about this question is putting yourself in the shoes of the business. Um, it says Liam Fortune sells these goods and materials. Um, pretend you are Liam Fortune, put yourself in his shoes. It's um, quite handy to do it that perspective. And obviously understanding the accounts is quite essential. So I think the first thing to do is just sort of dissect the T accounts in a way so we can sort of like understand how they work before we start putting entries in. So the cash book, how does the cash book go up and down? Like it goes up on the debit, down on the credit. So, simple enough, if we have cash in, we'll put it in the debit, if we make a payment somewhere, we'll have it on the credit. So, the sales ledger account, uh, Mitchell Limited, so essentially this is like a trade receivables account, and a trade receivable is an asset, isn't it? And assets go up on the debit, down on the credit. I'll get to the discount account, uh, discount account later, um, when we need to uh, make an entry in it. So, the first point we are put is the sales ledger account, Mitchell Limited, has a brought down of 440. Well, this is a trade receivables account, and you can never have a brought down the credit of a trade receivable account because that would mean we owe them money, and you can't owe money to a trade receivable, that's a trade payable, isn't it? So, on the 1st of November, uh, balance brought down, and it's just the amount in the question, so it's just 440 easy enough. So that's the only entry we need for that. So, the 3rd of November, we sold goods on credit to Mitchell Limited, 610. So, how simple is that? Well, dissecting the question is quite, uh, dissecting the point is quite simple. We sold goods on credit, which means we've not received any cash yet. So, we've increased the amount that people owe us. We've increased our trade receivables, so it must go up on the debit. So, on the 3rd of November, We've uh, made sales. We'll just put sales of 610. And that's the only entry for that so far because once we um, receive the cash, we'll credit it so it wipes out the account and we'll wipes out the amount owed so they don't owe us any mo money anymore and we'll debit our cash book to say that we've received the money. So it's as simple as that. So the next point, 12th of November. We were sent a credit note for goods returned by Mitchell Limited. So they've returned some goods um, that they've purchased on credit. So on 12th of November, we have some returns in, or sale returns, however you want to put it. And essentially, that means essentially um, they bought goods on credit from us and then returned them. So they don't owe us that money anymore. They previously owed us some money but they don't owe us it anymore because they return the goods. They can't owe us money if they don't have the goods, do they? So it just decreases the amount owed, so it goes on the credit, brings it down. As simple as that. So, 22nd November, this is where it gets a bit hectic and there's quite a few entries. So, we received a cheque from Mitchell Limited in full settlement at the opening 440. So this 440 here oops, rip, uh, relates to this 440 here. So we receive a check. So they must have paid us, haven't they? they they're going to decrease the amount they owe us because they're paying some of it back. So we can just put in here bank or a cash book. I'll just put in back it's CB cash book. So it's going to go into here, obviously. So we only received 418. We didn't re receive 440, did we? So now that we've made that entry, we can just put an entry in here, can't we? Our cash has gone up, and we'll just put it in the name of uh, Mitchell Limited uh, Ltd. And that is essentially four one eight. Okay, so what's happened here is we said if you ignore the uh, the third of November and the twelfth of November uh, entries, we've had a balance brought down of four forty. So Mitchell owes us four forty. But then we've only accepted 418. We said that's fine, you can pay us that. But if we just did the 440 minus 418, it still says that they owe us £22, doesn't it? They don't actually owe us £22. 
do they? We've said it's fine, don't pay us it. So we need to put some discount allowed in there, don't we? We've allowed them a discount because the amount they've paid us is actually less than the um, the actual amount that we sold to them, the value of the goods we sold to them. So this brings us on to this um, second page. This is obviously discount allowed. We're selling goods. It's common sense almost. We're selling goods. We can't have discount received, can we? When we're selling goods to other people, it must be allowed. Discount allowed, what is it? It's an expense. Where do expenses go upon? Go upon the debit. Um, so yeah, we've allowed a discount. 22nd of November. It's essentially just copying it from this side of the account, isn't it? It's gone on the credit here, so it must go on the debit here. So, Mitchell Limited. And that's just £22. So, now all we really need to do is just... Um, Bounce them all off, isn't it? In a sense. So this side, well, this side comes to one, two, four, five. That's quite simple. So and this side needs to come to one, two, four, five, doesn't it? So on the thirtieth of November, the last day of November, balance carried down. Well, it's just this one, two, four, five minus this four hundred eighteen. It's just eight, two, seven. So, obviously, the brought down on this side is always on this side, so the carried down on the 30th of November must be on this side. Because, because once we total them, the balance brought carried down is going to come to this side, isn't it, as a brought down in December. So, obviously, we need the carried down to be on this side. So, this is just 150. And this is also going to have to be 150. So it's just a sake of just, it's just a case of doing 1,050, take away all the values on the credit side. To give us our carry down, so our carry down is five five five. Um, we don't need a carry down for the um, discount allow. We don't carry that down in a sense. So um, that's basically the T accounts. Um, just make sure you're making every entry. Break it down obviously with these ups and downs. Which sides it go up down, up on which sides it go down on, and just make sure you uh, carry down it at the end of the uh, the period. So, various stakeholders will have an interest in the performance of Liam Fortune's business. So this can be external people, like shareholders and investors, internal people like managers or employees. So, we're told to identify two internal stakeholders who have an interest in the performance of the business and just state an interest. And why are they interested? So, one is obviously management or managers. So why would they be interest, well, interested? Well, they can make decisions of this information, can't they? So when they make decisions, what are you doing? You're planning for the future. You can plan for the future with these figures, can't you? You can't just, you don't set targets and plan for the future without financial information, can you? So also another thing, I know it's only two marks, but you might as well just put uh, enough. Monitor and set targets. If you want to set a target of say 10% uh, profit, gross profit increase uh, by the end of next year, you need to know what the gross profit is now so you can set that target. And that's what managers do. So another stakeholder, I've already mentioned it, employees. So the big one for them is job security. Uh, possible wage increase. That's a question mark. And job prospects. Is there a chance of them being promoted? Etc. Etc. So a really quick video. Um, next video, I'll probably do a topic video. I'll probably try and sum up the topic of inventory valuation. So AFCO, FIFO, the advantages, the disadvantages. Um, but besides that, um, see you in the next video. And thank you for watching.